I am Anil Kumar and in this particular video we will see how to evaluate composite functions and we will also try to understand their domain and range. When we say composite functions we are talking about two or more functions right. So let us consider simple functions like a linear function let us say f of x equals to x minus 4 and g of x equals to uh, let's have some restrictions here so we will have x square minus 1, a rational function. So we'll consider these two functions to see how to find uh, composite functions. So when we say composite functions, then what we do is one function is followed by the other. So we'll see what is g of f, right? So that is one way of writing composite function, which at times is also written as g of f of x, right? So so that's another way of writing. So this function is composed of with with function f of x. This function is composed with g. Right. So that is how the function is. Now, as you know, as far as the domain and range is concerned, here the domain is that x belongs to real numbers. There are no restrictions. However, here we do have restrictions. X belongs to real numbers but x is not equal to plus minus 1, right? So, so that is the domain for g of x, correct? Now, uh, let us see, as far as the range is concerned, you know, this function is not equal to 0, but it is all other values in real numbers. Now, let us see how we can actually have a set of values which can help us understand how to compose this function, right? So what we will do here is we'll take uh, the domain of f of x. Let us say uh, these are my values. That is the domain of f of x. Now, when I have domain of f of x, then these values on these values function f of x will be applied, and we'll get its range here, right? As you know, for this function, domain is and the range is all real numbers. So to start with, let me take few examples. So here we have set of all real numbers as we say, but we'll talk about few real numbers in particular to explain the concept, okay? So let us take the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this, okay? And there are much more. So we are saying domain of f of x is x, so we'll call this as x which belongs to set of real numbers, correct? Now, on this domain, the function f of x operates. So, so this is the function f which operates on this. So, the operation is x minus 1. For each value, if 1 is the input, then the output will be x minus 4. That means 1 minus 4. So, for this, you get minus 3, right? For 2, you will get... 2 minus 4, which is minus 2, right? For 3, you'll get minus 1, and accordingly, you'll get 0, 1, 2, right? So 4 minus 6 is 2. So what I'm trying to say here is that when the f of x, the inside function, operates in that point, so we get these outputs for respective inputs, correct? So that is, that is how. Some of the outlets are being shown here. As you know, it's all real numbers, including decimals and all those numbers, right? But we are just taking few to understand the concept. So what we get here is that we get f of x here. So this is f of x for us, the output of f, right? So f of x is equals to x minus 4. So that is what we get here. As you can see, for f of x, domain is all real numbers, and these will be also all real numbers. Now when I say g of f of f, then it really means what? It means that now on the output of f of x, operation of the function g starts, right? So that is that is how it is. So for each output or range of f of x becomes the domain for g. And then the function g is applied to this part, correct? Now, when you apply g of x to minus 3 as your input, what do you get? 
So what happens is we have to substitute this value here. So when I write minus 3 square, I get plus 9. 9 minus 1 is 8, so I get 1 over 8 here. So in a way, what I have done here is actually I have related my input 1 also with this. So that is that is how it is. So you can see that this is g of f of 1, 1 over 8. You get the idea, right? So that is how we are actually relating. And this particular relation here is called g of f. So you can see domain is subset of domain of f, right? That is how it is. And range is going to be subset of g. Let us further work out and see how does it really turn out to, right? So for each number, which is in the range of f, we will try to calculate g of x, right? So if I substitute 2, what do I get? So 1 over 2 square is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so I get 1 over 3 in this case. If I substitute minus 1, then what do I get? Now, minus 1 square is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0, so 1 over 0. Wow, so that is not defined. So this really doesn't work out. So this particular range of f does not work out. So it cannot be. So that means that this came from 3. That means 3, which is in the domain of f of x, cannot be in the domain of g of f. You get the idea. From g, uh, from f of x of 3, we get range minus 1. But if minus 1 is the input for g, you get undefined number. So that does not work out. So that is not in the domain of our function. Now if I substitute 0, 1 and 2, then what do I get? If I substitute 0, I get 1 over 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. But if I put 1 there, then again I have the same situation. 1 over 1 minus, oh sorry, 1 over 1 minus 1, it doesn't work out. And therefore, 5 should also not be in the domain of g of f. But all other numbers will give us some relevant output. 2 means 4 minus 1, so we get 1 over 3, right? Likewise, we'll get all other numbers. And what we get here as an output is indeed g of f. You could write this as g of f of x, correct? So as you see from here, if you are considering domain of g of f, right, then what it is in this particular scenario, you can see it is x belongs to all real numbers. Now that is the domain of f of x, the inside function, but it does not include these two, where x is not equal to 3 and 5. Since 3 and 5 results into a value which is restriction on the domain of g of x. Do you see that? So that is how you can find domain of function of function, right? And we have also seen how to evaluate each and every function, correct? So to evaluate, let us go get into these steps once again. If I have to evaluate a function, let us say g of f of 4, for example, then what do we do? So in that case, first you have to find what is f of 4. So we do g of, now f of 4 means what? f of 4 means f of 4, right? So, so we'll put 4 here. So we get 4 minus 4. You get the idea? Now g of f of 4 is actually equals to g of 0. Correct? Now if you substitute 0 here, you get minus 1, right? So you get minus 1. That is how we evaluate it. So, 4, if you substitute in the function f of x, you get 0 as your output. And when you substitute 0 in g of x, you get minus 1 as the output. So, that is the way to evaluate, right? Now, you can practice doing, for example, the other way. That is to say, if I write g of, instead of g of, if I write f of g, and sometimes we also use a notation like this, 0, right? That means... We have to first evaluate g of 0. That means f of g of 0, right? So if I substitute 0 here, I get 1 over minus 1, 
which is minus 1. So we get f of minus 1. Substitute minus 1 in your function and then you get minus 1 minus 4 which is minus 5. So that is how you can evaluate the functions, right? So, so let's try some more values. Now, of course, if I doing f of g, then we cannot find f of g of plus or minus 1 since those are the restrictions of the inside functions, right? Except for those, you can have any other number. For example, you could have square root of 2, right? In that case, we have f of g of square root of 2 and that gives you, if I substitute 1 over square root 2, let me do that here, that is to say square root of 2 square minus 1, that is what I am trying to do here and I am trying to find f of this value, is it okay? So square root of 2 square is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so here what I get is f of 1 and if I substitute 1 here, then I get what? 1 minus 4 as minus 3, right? So, so we get minus 3 as the result, right? So, so what you find here is that for different values, we get different results. And how to evaluate? Always start from inside. So steps to evaluate is, one thing you should understand, to evaluate, there are restrictions in domain. You cannot evaluate each and every function. For example, for example, f of g of 1 is not possible, correct? Since g of 1 is restricted, right? Similarly, restriction is f of, I could write this as also g of minus 1, other one. So these are the two restrictions for the given situation. So for these values, we cannot have any other answer. For all the values in this particular case, we have to start with, we have to follow. So first you do inside function. So it is inside function followed by the outside function. So that is how you evaluate. And I hope with simple example like this, the concept is clear. Also find some links here which will help you to practice with similar examples. Thank you and all the best.